All right, good evening. We'll call to order the regular meeting for the Oneonta City School District Board of Education, January 27th, 2021. May we have the roll call, please? Mr. Grau? Here. Mrs. Burnsworth? Here. Mr. Gaysford? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mrs. Cashman? Here. Mr. Beckering? Here. Mrs. Kurkowski? Here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, for the attendees, we appreciate your patience. We had a little technical difficulty and that's why we got started late. Resolved to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Resolved to accept the minutes of the December 16, 2020 regular meeting as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolved to accept the minutes of the January 5th, 2021 special meeting as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Thank you. That brings us to our first opportunity to address the board and for the attendees, um, there will be another opportunity if you uh, tap, type a comment in the chat, in the Q and A, excuse me, um, I will read it uh, during the public period. And as I said, we have another one coming up towards the end of the meeting. Resolve that the teaching and administrative personnel memorandum 2021-02 be waived and that the action item stated January 27th, 2021 be approved as recommended by the superintendent of schools. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Grau, I, I just wanted to um, share that on uh, tonight's uh, memo, we are recognizing the retirements of Tammy Bordinger, Gina Knudsen, Leanne Myers, and Renee Huber. These uh, have been phenomenal contributors to uh, this school district for many, many years. Collectively, they've touched thousands and thousands of lives and um, uh, they're gonna be sorely missed. It's uh, absolutely with mixed emotions that we, um, you know, we receive their retirement, but certainly wish them all of the very best uh, in their retirement because that's what they deserve. Here, here, I agree. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolved that the reading of the non-certificated personnel memorandum 2021-02 be waived and that the action items dated January 27th, 2021 be approved by, as recommended by the superintendent of schools. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Gao, I just wanted to um, just share with you that uh, uh, on tonight's agenda is uh, um, Mr. Cesar Polanco, who is going to be joining our custodial team. And uh, he'll be stationed over at Valley View Elementary. Um, you know, from what I hear from the interview um, and uh, speaking with a gentleman on our staff who knows him, he seems like he's going to be a great addition to our team. And we look forward to uh, welcoming him and uh, having him be part of our uh, Yellow Jacket family. Great. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
All right, we'll just down to the uh, superintendent's report, Mr. Brindley. Thank you, Mr. Grau. Uh, I just wanted to give you a very brief update on the capital project. Uh, day Automation and one of their subcontractors, uh, Hoffler, um, continue to work in the district, uh, mostly on our control systems. Um, so they, um, you know, they are projected to work um, actually throughout the next couple of months, tying in all of our systems, trying to get as many of our controls over to a single point of access, which would be uh, Day Automation. Uh, other than that, uh, again, they're continuing to uh, work on their punch list items and, um, you know, they're progressing pretty well. Uh, very briefly, I, I did want to share that uh, I virtually attended the BOCE sponsored legislative meeting today uh, with many of our state legislatures. Um, uh, Congressman Delgado, Senator Oberacker, and uh, Assemblyman Tag and um, uh, Miller and uh, it was a it was a good meeting. Their focus um, obviously is on broadband in the area. However, we as a BOCES uh, shared our concerns with them uh, as a uh, a rural set of communities uh, and how uh, we would certainly hope that they would continue to advocate for us upstate here. Um, you know, I think that their focus and, and ours uh, is. Uh, is close. Of course, we express the same concerns that we generally uh, always do um, relative to school funding and uh, all of the things that are associated with that. We also shared our uh, concern about uh, uh, vaccination rollout, which is uh, pretty much shared you know, across the country, uh, how difficult it is for um, school districts that do not have school-based health systems uh, to um, be able to vaccinate faculty and, and staff in any sort of structured way. Uh, honestly, right now it is it is us trying to uh, continually throughout the day visit the uh, uh, different resources that we have to find possible openings for our folks and get that information out to them as quickly as possible so, so they can register. They were very receptive um, and uh, hopefully they will uh, you know, continue to advocate on our behalf. So I did want to just share that with, with you. Uh, also tonight under my section is, um, is our uh, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Mrs. Moore, who uh, is going to provide for us her um, uh, monthly update just to keep us in the loop as to, to where we're heading. So thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Mr. Brinley. So anyway, uh, welcome back and I'm happy to be presenting tonight. I guess I didn't mean to say welcome back. I meant to say happy new year because isn't this our first like board meeting for the new year, except for when we had our retreat a couple of weeks ago. So um, just a few updates. And then we have a special guest tonight that's gonna present just a, a few items of some things that we've been working on, but um, just a little update to uh, end of the first semester is this Friday and um, high school has been in a midterm week this week and working on midterms and different things. Um, so that's been good. The teachers have all been reporting how nice it is to be back in hybrid. And so that's been going pretty well. Um, the focus this month has been preparing for the curriculum work day that's scheduled on February 10th, which I talked a little bit about at our board retreat. I'm not sure if you could hear me because I had a mask on, but um, basically um, the teachers are just going to be meeting. They're going to be taking a pause to look at you know, what they've taught so far from September to January and just reflecting and planning um, their work that is going to be coming up February to June. Um, this work is going to be, you know, is going to lead into our curriculum work that will continue when we can really get going and, you know, to reach our goal with curriculum maps and pacing guides uh, district wide. So it won't be, um, work that's just going to be done just for this year it will be kind of a stepping stone and we can continue this work when we have more time um, but the teachers i've talked to many teachers they're looking forward to just having the time to be able to sit down and say okay this is where we are this is where we need to go you know identifying any gaps that um, we have you know we're hopeful that we'll find out soon if if we're going to be um 
having regents. Um, we were hoping that maybe in the February regents meeting, they would make an announcement, but we're not sure, but the teachers, you know, it doesn't affect what they're going to teach that much, but it does take a little pressure off of them at this point because we've been in and out of hybrid and remote so much. So that's gonna be some really great work uh, that we will uh, keep you updated on. Um, over the next week, I'm going to be meeting with principals and sharing the plan um, that I've created with, and they're going to help facilitate those meetings. So that's going to happen over the next uh, week or so. And that's basically, we are still, again, working on our Duet Tech Conference, which is coming up on March 17th. And so I'll keep you posted on that as well. And I don't want to take up too much time tonight, but I do want to uh, introduce, I think most of you know, Mr. Chris Kaschek. He is our one of our school counselors at the high school, and he's doing a wonderful job as an administrative intern this year. And one of the projects that he is working on is our district attendance protocol policy committee work. I've talked to you a little bit about that. I mentioned it, I think last time we met as a board as well. And so I asked Chris, because he is doing a really wonderful job with this committee to join us this evening and just kind of give you an overview of where what we're doing. And it'll give you an idea of what's coming down the road because the Board of Education is going to be um, a part of this uh, once we get some of our, our work done. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris. And thank you so much, Chris, for joining us this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Moore, and uh, thank you, Mr. Grau, and the rest of the board for having me. I really appreciate being here. Um, I do want to just say a quick thanks to Mrs. Moore and Mr. Brindley and really all the administrative staff. Um, uh, they've been great, and all the teachers have been great in supporting me in my internships, so I just want to, you know, thank everybody for all the support um, since I've been doing this in the beginning of the year, so um, thank you. So um, I'm going to share my screen here. I have a couple of quick um, slides to show you, and it's basically from our committee work. Um, so basically we, um, we have um, a, a group of uh, teachers and counselors and social workers that have come together from all the buildings working on this project. And um, we started our work in December and it's gonna continue through June. Um, and it's basically built off of the district comprehensive improvement plan um, that uh, has this as part of that. So in the district comprehensive improvement plan, it outlines uh, basically four committee charges that um, we're working on. Um, we're reviewing any building level protocols and the board of education policy to, to see if we need to update those, which is what we're gonna be doing at the end of this uh, process is probably you know back looking at the board of education policy and making any minor changes that uh, we'll need so that all of the plans and protocols and policies are in line with each other. Um, secondly, we're gonna be looking at um, the data um, about attendance and chronic, attend or, and chronic absenteeism. Uh, we'll probably look at 2018 and 19 data. Um, the 2019-20 data is skewed and sold this year because of um, all the remote instruction, but we're gonna be looking at that you know, data, thanks to Mr. Brindley and Mrs. Moore. I have access to look at that and dive down into uh, the absentee rates by subgroups and by individuals, um, you know, for the last couple of years. Uh, the third charge really is to, is to develop those district-wide protocols. Um, that's what we're working on right now is we're kind of working on the district level protocol, which, which spans all of the buildings. Um, and then each building will probably have their own sort of um, process they file to fall in line with the, with the district protocol. And then lastly, as I said, um, later this year in the summer, we'll be looking, we'll be coming back to you and suggesting some minor changes to the Board of Education policy so that all these, you know, policies are kind of in line with, with each other. Um, so the next slide kind of shows how these plans and protocols are going to be nested inside of each other. So, you know, on the top there, you'll see the Board of Education policy and the New York Commissioner's regulation, which sort of drives our policy. That's, that's kind of our strategic level of what we're looking at, but we're really focusing on the district protocol here in the middle, the operations level. And then each building this summer will then start to build out um, their, their building level plans, which fall underneath these two other levels of plans. And then lastly, it's just our sort of our plan of action as to where we're going. Um, we've already had our first two meetings that you'll see in green in December and January. Our next meeting is on February 24th. 
And um, we're basically using um, a high school a district protocol that we have as our sort of our um, kind of our like our baseline that we're kind of editing and building off of to come up with our final product. And then we're hoping to have the final drafts of the protocol done in June, and then we'll update the Board, the Board of Education policy later in the summer with hopefully a September implementation um, of the plans in, at the building level. So are there any questions that kind of ends uh, my formal presentation, but are there any questions that anybody has on this work that we're doing? Chris, I, I would one like to thank you for taking this on. This is a, this is a great project. Um, you know, as we all know, absenteeism is, a, um, is, is, is quite an indicator uh, relative to student success. And we, we often think that we understand it, but the work that you're doing, uh, you know, from an intervention, from, first of all, from a recognition standpoint, and then uh, a course of action relative to intervention is super important. So thank you for taking that on. Thank you, Tom. Um, I really appreciate the support and, um, um, and all that. So if anybody ever has any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. But thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mrs. Moore and Mr. Brindley, that's it for me. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Can I ask you a question as long as we're on this topic? Uh, Chris, you mentioned subgroups um, that you were targeting for and identifying. Could you just mention what those are? Yeah, um, so I don't have them at the, at the tip of my fingers right, right now, but there are things like um, uh, the, the minority groups, the uh, social economic classes of students, um, special needs students. So those are sort of, and then, you know, like, um, I think it's mainly like the demographic, you know, kind of subgroups, the social, the um, social economic groups and special needs. I, I think in the, it breaks down, I think there's like not eight or nine subgroups that fall under those three main categories. Okay, thanks. If, if, if you want, I can get you the specific ones later. Yeah, that'd be great. I appreciate it. Okay. Yep. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Chris. Thank, Thank you, Chris. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Colleen, as well. Mr. Grau, if I, if I could just uh, quickly, you know, this time of the year, it's very, very difficult, uh, you know, many times keeping up with the weather. Um, and when you think you're going to get a half an inch and get surprised by four, um, you know, especially during a midterm week, um, you know, our uh, grounds crew, our custodial team, they just do a wonderful job. And, uh, you know, they, they're out there early uh, trying to keep us all safe. Uh, so I just wanted to recognize them. Very briefly, I just wanted to share, you know, we are anxiously awaiting guidance from um, Otsego County. I know Otsego County is working with um, the other departments of health from around New York State uh, to come up with uh, some uh, form of a guidance document relative to high risk sports. I'm not hearing a ton about what that might entail, uh, although I do hear um, talk of, uh, you know, it's a go if our, uh, you know, five day rolling average is, is below four. Um, right now we're at 5.5, which is concerning. I'm also hearing that there may be a testing component where, uh, depending on the county, if our kids are heading to their county, uh, we need to maintain um, some degree of testing uh, twice a week in order for us to travel to different counties. Uh, so I'm, I'm fearful that there's going to be a lot of roadblocks. What we've done so far, you know, we've, we've uh, anticipated some of those things. We have put together a uh, high risk sports um, practice and play safety protocols. Um, Mr. Mackey and myself and the nurses have been reaching out to our district physician, Dr. Fredette. Uh, the Binex now tests that are utilized for this type of testing um, are uh, right now difficult to come by. Many of the vendors are holding uh, school districts responsible for 
minimum orders of 10,000 tests at $5 a piece. Um, so we are, again, reaching out to our own county and our own BOCES who both have secured limited service laboratory um, agreements with the state to see if they perhaps can uh, help us in, in that regard. So there's still a lot to be um, determined. Uh, when we met with uh, the Department of Health this week, uh, we, we were kind of anticipating, uh, you know, some sort of uh, guidance, but uh, Heidi Bond had made it perfectly clear that they are working with departments of health, uh, basically uh, from Oneana up through the capital region. Um, I asked if she could possibly reach out to Shenango and Broome, considering that's, uh, the, that's where our competitors live in those counties. So uh, I know she's working hard on it, um, but I just wanted to at least share that with you, uh, you know, as we, as we don't have a lot of answers at this point. You know, if, if there's a minimum order, 10,000, could, could maybe the stack schools get together? Yeah, all of that's being discussed. And that's why I think we're all kind of waiting on, uh, uh, you know, waiting to hear how or where the um, counties land on this you know, that rolling average goes up a lot quicker than it comes down. So of course, that's the concern. Um, if schools are in remote, we're hearing that they can't participate. Um, we're also hearing that, uh, um, you know, if you start an athletic season and uh, you drift above four, um, we're not allowed to compete anymore. So basically, we're exploring a lot of options. You know, if, if by chance, um, athletic competition is not something that we can uh, do with other uh, districts. We're going to see if we can start uh, employing something here. If it's, uh, you know, if it's intramural, if it's, uh, you know, getting kids into the fitness center, uh, if it's something. So we're exploring all options. Um, we're just waiting to hear what exactly we are allowed to do. So more updates to come for sure. Tom, I just had one quick question too. It's not a biggie, but I thought I heard one, one of the caveats for the high risk sports was that schools would have to stay within their own region as far as not being, in, not being able to travel out of any other region, us being in the Mohawk Valley, but playing in Stack, which is in the Southern tier. I mean, have you heard anything about that? We, we have, um, but you know, again, some of, the, some of the information is a little sketchy depending on the, on the source. Um, so, you know, I think that's why, that's why I think it's good that Heidi is, uh, you know, approaching this, um, you know, from a, a broader perspective, so we can get a, a, a really good idea of, of what's going on, um, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the broader region, I guess you could say. So, yeah, we've heard a lot of different things, Darren, uh, all sorts of uh, things that are concerning, uh, just when you think that, you know, there's, there's something that you can do, uh, you hear something else that makes it more problematic. Um, but, you know, in our conversations today, I, you know, I basically just said, you know what, we, we just need to wait and hear from the Department of Health uh, because we're doing a lot of planning and uh, a lot of speculating. But, uh, you know, until we hear from them, you know, that should give us uh, a game plan, so to speak, uh, for moving forward. So, I understood. yes. I just have a quick question. You said that our rolling average is five. Is that for the county? What What is that, or for our region? Uh, that's that's a that's the county. The county is five point five. Is that what you said? Well, actually, I should say it was five point five as of yesterday. I'm not entirely sure what it is today. Okay. Thank you. But I do know the last uh, you know time we were below four was um, you know in like mid November. So. So we'll monitor it, and we will uh, we'll wait to hear what um, what Heidi Bond has to say. We're anticipating that document uh, either tomorrow or Friday. At least we're hoping. Now let's hope. Yeah. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, resolve that the reading of Financial Memorandum 2021-01, dated January 27th, 2021, be waived, and that the financial action items be approved as recommended by the superintendent of schools. 
So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, yes, on the financial memorandum tonight, uh, we have again, a very generous donation from the Dewar Foundation for the backpack program. Um, they, they do donate a lot to that. Um, and most of what is on the memorandum is, are the UPK contracts. And um, the difference in this annual contract is that we are funneling through the money that we get from the state and that's been paid to us at 80%. So we're hopeful that the state will restore the other 20% funding, but until then um, we're paying the contracts at 80% and all the UPK partners have been notified. The one good thing about this year's UPK grant um, is that usually we have to, they're only eligible for whatever children they have on bed stay. Um, this year, it's sort of like a rolling enrollment while they recognize that some kids may not go in the beginning, but maybe they'll go later, you know, depending on the situation. So that was kind of nice that um, they may be able to get some restored funding that way too, if they have children that enter the program later. Um, and usually that's not allowed. Um, the other thing on there is a user agreement with the County of Otsego for the voting machines. and. Um, Reggie and I are very hopeful that the voting will be in person and we will be using these machines. So we're asking you to approve that agreement. And then there's another change order on there. Lisa, if I could just, just weigh in very quickly. Um, that concern was raised at the uh, legislative meeting today that we really need to know, uh, you know what, uh, in what capacity our, our vote, voting will take place. And they, they were certainly in agreement. So hopefully we'll hear something soon. Yeah, it was a nightmare last year with all the last minute decisions and everything yeah. we had to do to change the voting process. Any questions? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Well, that brings us to our second opportunity to address the board. There are two comments. Uh, Kathy Lynch says congratulations to Gina Knudsen and Leanne Myers on their retirements. They will definitely be missed at the Oneonta High School by colleagues and students. And Nancy Osborne, uh, I would like to thank Renee Huber, Huber for her years of service to our school district. She's dedicated and wonderful. She has a dedicated and wonderful relationship with students, staff, and parents. She will be greatly missed at Greater Plans. So thank you both for those comments, and uh, and I uh, I agree. Congratulations on your retirements. That brings us to round table. Um, I guess we can start with Sue. Get to go first. Um, I don't really have anything, but I do want to let everyone know, and I think um, most of you are probably aware, but um, there's a parents group that we started for recognizing the seniors this year, um, very similar to what Amy did last year with a group of parents for the class of 2020. We're trying to do the same thing for the class of 2021. Um, we have some things that are in the works and, uh, some fundraising. Um, and so hopefully beginning in February, um, on a monthly basis, the seniors will be record, there'll be some recognition for them. Um, so I will keep you all kind of abreast of that. And, uh, at some point, much like we did last year, hopefully the board will, um, we can, come together and support one of the events or one of the things that we have planned in the future. That's all I have. All right, Cash. Uh, nothing to report committee wise. I want to apologize for continuing to put my video on and off. I was the only one home for a while and the dogs had to keep going out. So for those of you with animals know exactly how I feel. Um, want to congratulate everyone that's retiring. Um, I've known Ms. Bordinger for a while because of volleyball. So, uh, and I know she's in one of my daughter's class of 2008 too. And um, so 
congratulations on the retirement and Mr. Kasich, thanks for your report tonight. Um, I think the attendance is really important and I know at the college level, they struggle with it too. So um, I appreciate all the hard work that's being done in all areas as always. So thank you. All right, Amy. Well, I'll echo everyone else. Congratulations uh, to our retirees. Well deserved. Enjoy it. Uh, thank you, Chris, for your report um, and the work you're doing uh, in the high school alongside of, of your day job in the guidance office. <laughs> um, and I, we had a communications committee uh, meeting this evening uh, right before our board meeting, a very productive meeting. Uh, a lot of focus was around Parent Square. Um, this is kind of the pilot year for it. Um, we still have our other uh, school messenger in place uh, for this year, uh, but we will eventually migrate to just one and uh, maybe we'll have, we'll still be very well informed, but without as many uh, messages as we get. Uh, sometimes. Uh, but it is a very useful tool. I think it's been embraced by our families, our faculty, um, even our high school students uh, have, have the app and they're, they're checking themselves in in the morning. Um, and we continue to kind of try to keep our thumb and keep our, our, our um, community well informed about, about where we stand um, as a school district with, with COVID. And um, so those, those are the things we talked about this evening. That's all I got. Thank you. Sean? Okay, thank you real quick. Uh, again, all the retirees, Renee, Tammy, Gina, and congratulations. Uh, you're gonna enjoy the new one, Cesar, from what time, I'm sure he's gonna be a great asset to the, uh, to the building. And Chris, thank you so much, uh, very informative what you had to offer. I'm really looking forward to the final draft if you want to call it the final draft, but um, I was looking at that timeline and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to, uh, you're putting out there. So that's, that's great. And one thing I, we, we forgot to mention this and it's really just a small thing. I noticed that on the uh, board at the docks tonight, three lifeguards, that's a step in the right direction. I, I noticed we had what, Anna Bischoff, Candace Dudley and Molly Forbes, um, the student workers. Why I, it just brought a smile on my face knowing that we're, we're moving we're getting there, you know, little steps at a time. So congratulations, those three on uh, student workers. And uh, I don't think you could, well, you probably could, but they're great kids. And we have great kids all around, but congratulations to them. Um, Amy, I want to, I want to echo what you had to say about parent square. I, I love it. I really do. I get up in the morning and, you know, we all get in this mode of just trying to get the kid to school or kids to school or what we got going on. And, Boom. Oh yeah, I realized I got to put my, my temperature in there or I didn't answer those questions. And, and Parent Square is very, very informative. It's right there. And yes, we don't need any more platforms in addition to that. So I will, um, I agree with you, Amy. That's, that's a great thing to have. And I, I look forward to it every morning when it just reminds me as I'm sitting down, oh yeah, send the information. And last but not least, Sue, when you mentioned the, uh, the friends, family and supporters of the OH class in 2021, um, I love how Facebook is getting flooded and how everything is out there, the, the, the fundraising. I'm hoping people jump on board with this thing because these students deserve every bit of the recognition as last year's students. So I know Heidi's on there listening to the meeting this evening and it brings a smile to my face every time I read it. So, and I know there's opportunities for everybody to pitch in, help out. Please do. These kids deserve it. They're good kids. So with that, that's all I really have. All right, Darren. Well, as always, I'm following Sean and he just took the wind out of my sails for everything. Uh, basically ditto on everything that Sean and everybody else have said already. Congratulations on the retirements. Uh, it's always bittersweet to say goodbye, but uh, people are moving on to the next step in there in their adventure. And uh, so congratulations on your retirement and enjoy it. And thank you for your service, many years of service to the uh, Oneana uh, City School District. Uh, congratulations also to Cesar Polanco, the new custodian at Valley View. And thanks to Colleen and Chris for your uh, presentation on uh, the attendance policy review. Um, it's always nice to have, you know, 
especially out of an internship, see the productivity of an internship, looking through some of the board's policies and make sure they're all up to snuff. And so that's, that's kind of nice. And, and I do look forward to it to see uh, what you come up with. Um, and uh, as far as the uh, friends and family of the supporters of the uh, class of 2021, there are a lot of people doing a lot of really good hard work and it's really exciting to see. So, you know, I have one of those seniors too. So I really appreciate all of the, all the, uh, families that are doing a lot of work uh, trying to show some some recognition for the uh, high school seniors. And the only other thing is that we keep our fingers crossed that we can kind of remain hybrid and maybe start to uh, some high risk sports in the next few weeks. And that's all I have. Jamie. Okay, last and least here almost, huh? But uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, Said all the uh, certainly relevant things here. Uh, retirees, I certainly wish them well, and uh, hopefully their last few months here are are their best, and uh, and uh, that they anticipate their future. Uh, Chris, uh, certainly uh, thank you on that project here. Uh, certainly a strong parallel between attendance and, and success for our students, and I look forward to hearing about ways we can improve that. Um, let's see, we we did have. Uh, finance uh, yesterday, which uh, Bill attended as well. And as you might uh, surmise, the budget is uh, uh, paramount in, in our discussions and, you know, everything ties into that this time of year. Uh, it has been worked on, you know, for months and months here, but some of the, you know, major line items are just coming into play here. So uh, we've had several months of uh, analysis about our health insurance and uh, we're making some headway there uh, potentially have you know a uh, change that looks like it uh, certainly could save us you know three three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year with comparable coverage so that's it's something we're taking a hard look it's real money uh and uh um let's see uh we talked about the items in the financial memorandum already uh the tax cap calculation which is this uh in essence a logarithm <laughs> of many factors that go into the two percent which is never two percent you know it may be as low as half of one percent uh based on the current expectations here so you know that's uh one percent is around uh, i think around two hundred twenty five thousand dollars so you know there's not potentially going to be a lot of meaningful money uh, assisting our budget on the revenue side if we stay within our tax cap, which is certainly where we strive to be and uh, have been every year I've been on the board that it existed. So um, it's just a number that uh, is always in flux and it's one we have to keep in mind and and certainly one that looks to be a little more challenging for us this year than, than in uh, many other years. Um, Bus proposition will, uh, in all likelihood, be on uh, on uh, the uh, budget vote uh, for a couple buses. Which, you know, if you we have a rotation there, and uh, and we end up with a lot of deferred maintenance if we don't keep up with them. And of course, their their condition is mandated by the state. So, you know, if you go south, you see buses that are 20 years old. You don't see that in New York um, because of the condition requirements. So, and uh, the, the first run of the governor's budget, uh, you know, we went through that in some detail. Um, you know, there's the wild cards of, uh, of what might be a holdback is, is certainly uh, uh, evident in, in that, um, you know, there's a 6 billion and a $15 billion caveat whereby, you know, the state is really looking for federal money. If we get the 15, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're probably in, in decent shape from a uh, the state's funding its uh, its requirements to us. If we get the six, uh, you know, which is six billion is what the state was in the hole before COVID. So we we just there's a few more as you might surmise uh, with the COVID here. We've got a few different issues than we usually might. Um, but uh, Lisa and her team and Tom are are certainly staying as close to this on a daily basis as they can and uh and finance, uh, you know, 
really following it on a monthly basis and, and potentially uh, be here, you know, based on the many considerations. At any rate, it's much fun and exciting as usual. Uh, as Bill probably agree. And, uh, you know, it's uh, February next week. So um, more will become clearer uh, in the very near term. But uh, I think from, from 10,000 feet, it's safe to say, you know, um, you know, money is going to be uh, tighter uh, in the future than maybe it has been. Um, if we get some, you know, federal relief, well, that that may be this year, but uh, certainly not going to help us in subsequent years. So we just we have to be continually looking, uh, from my uh, perspective, at ways to educate our kids better in a more efficient manner, and that that is something that will be echoed all throughout the state. So that's all I have. Bill, you're, of course, free to add to that if you want. No, I thank you for uh, for covering finance. You know, the only, the only thing is we're still holding our breath on the, the money that was held back this year. Um, there's no. conflicting information about whether or not they're going to make us whole on our funding this year. Um, and, and from what they didn't pay us from last year, too. Uh, so, we'll, you know, that, that will certainly impact a lot of a lot of things that we do program wise and, and budget wise. Um, the other thing, you know, Amy mentioned Parent Square and, and uh, Bonnie gave us a, a little tour of the backside of that and, and her side, the administrative side. It's, it, it gives some really valuable information about valid email addresses and, and, and how many people are reached and which ones, you know, which messages are being reached and things. And, and I think there may even be some uh, some information on open rates for emails and things if you kind of dig into it. So it, it's, it's a very valuable tool. And I think, you know, Bonnie said, and, and you certainly understand that this is our, our kind of, you know, break in year as we learn more and more about it, uh, more and more things we can do with it. So it's a, it's a pretty neat app. Um, something else we talked about in the um, communications committee was just kind of trying to tweak the, uh, the COVID dashboard on the website to give a little more information without really, um, you know, we, everybody's got great ideas about everything that should be on the dashboard, but somebody's got to track it and, and, you know, it's not practical and, 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 you know, our school nurses have their hands full. We don't want them, you know, tracking a, a hundred other things. So uh, we're trying to find things to be informative and balance that with not a whole lot of work in, involved with it. So um, that's something. And, and I do want to, I want to thank Tom because uh, you know, we're all on the district list. We see all the emails that go out and, and you know, I know you're not uh, specifically like clicking on websites to see when immunizations are available. You're getting the information, but I appreciate that you're passing it along as quickly as you are um, so that, you know, our, our teachers can get out there and get, get vaccinated and, and get the follow-up vaccine because, um, you know, it's very important. You know, that, that certainly will help us in our move forward uh, to possibly getting back 100% or, you know, as close to 100% as we can. Um, and who knows if we can do that this year, but we certainly, you know, that's our goal for next. So um, that is all that I had with that. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purposes of special education and personnel. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> <We're adjourned. laughs> Good night, everyone. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.